Okay. Um, I, I forgot to look at the news today. I know that our cases in Iowa are always up, so I'm just kind of guessing that's the case. Um, but I don't have a lot to share on like official news, but I did have an adventure where I went to the University of Iowa hospital and um, helped a friend who was having surgery. So I went out into the world and that was, uh, that was exciting and felt risky. And I had all my weapons of masks and hand sanitizer wherever I went. And um, I spent like, 12 hours at the hospital. Um, so I'm a little bit like just aware of my body and how I am and, but I don't seem to have any issues or anything. So i um, glad about that. Um, um, and I don't really know about the protests. I don't really, I don't have a lot to offer um, today, but anyway, that's what I have to share. So um, I'm gonna see. I want to start with Kevin today. Um, how are you doing, Kevin? I'm doing okay. I'm having problems with my computer, so I can't get my video to work, and I can't see everybody, only who's talking at present. Things <laughs> 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 are good here. Okay. Just going to keep it simple. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to, I suppose, did you say you can't, you don't have your video up? Is that what you said? Correct. Okay, then I'll pick, I'll pass it on for you to uh, Otis, we haven't seen in a while. How are you doing, Otis? Can you hear me, Otis? I don't think he can hear. Maybe he's still connecting. Well, we'll come back to Otis. How about you, Davine? How are you doing? So I'm doing good. Uh, we're starting to get show hosts back in the station. We've installed a screen, uh, a sneeze guard, a plexiglass sneeze guard, and our mics are, are, are the boom arms on our mics. We can extend um, six feet apart. And uh, so we had a um, show host come in last night with a singer and and uh they were far apart because we saw it on the video that they shot and so we know that they're doing the right thing <laughs> and all is well here oh that's good to in, hear. North, in in north carolina wow that's wonderful okay well another simple one you can pass it on to the next person joseph, joseph mcguire is right beside me on my screen Hello. Um, in this today, interesting. I've been at the away from the radio station in Mount Vernon, Washington, and so I'm at home since March, uh, doing my men uh, operations duties as well as producing scheduled talks. And uh, pretty much, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> and you're going to help us today with our topic. I am, yes. Uh, you want to pass it on to the next person? The other Joseph, or, 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 <laughs> or sorry. Well, hello, I'm Joseph Orozco, coming to you from the center of the world. And um, KIDE, Hoopa, California. We're doing pretty well here. It's an, a nice warm day, probably in the upper 80s which is okay for us sometimes it gets 114 for a while then we drop down to the comfortable high 90s but uh, today is really a nice day wow you have a really nice yard oh yeah that's what i say it's the center of the world <laughs> okay well uh is there someone that you would like to pass it to uh let's go, let's can we get Otis? We tried him once. Are you, are you with us now? You tried me once? Yeah, I don't think you heard me the first time when I asked how you were doing. Oh, no. I was texting Avi and telling him to get the oh, call. Oh, okay. I have to push right. people around. I, uh, I work with Ursula and uh, Stephanie uh, 
I, Joe knows me. I make his life miserable with the confessor and the archive, and that's the, the stuff that I do. I wrote all that stuff, so you can blame me for the problems you have with it. <laughs> it's a great way to start, Otis. It's very good. <laughs> um, do you want to pass it to someone who hasn't talked yet? Oh, it sounds like Vertical's mic is not working, so skip him for now. I, I, we'll I just say hi to Vertical. Hi, Vertical. How are you doing? Hi, Vertical. Well, the next one would be on my screen would be Allison at WPPN. All right. Okay. Hey, everybody. Um, so, yeah, I'm Allison, uh, semi-new to the Pacifica calls. Um, you might know Vanessa Maria Graber, who uh, is the station manager uh, at WPPM, just for people who maybe are familiar with her, but um, missed her news from the last meeting. Uh, she is uh, taking a job with Free Press, so she's not going to be station manager anymore, and um, I'm radio uh, programming and production coordinator at w WPPM. So. Um, you know, being more diligent, diligent about being on these calls and also um, just kind of picking up some tasks from her. So um, the news really is, you know, on our end, it's been a lot of like trying to transfer, you know, knowledge and it, responsibilities. And one thing we're working on now is like essentially an operations handbook, which we have not, you know, yet put together. So, you know, all of the knowledge that I'm sure everyone here has that, you know, you feel like is is there but it's just not on paper you know we're currently working to get that on on paper for me and for whoever else you know gets involved uh, down the line so that's kind of a a big undertaking um news in philly you know cases are um they were dropping for a while then probably the last probably about four weeks ago we were seeing a drop and then uh cases started to sort of rise again and are now like continuing to either sort of you know, just basically teeter around the same and maybe slowly rise. So the city um, had a plan to go into our green phase. Um, and uh, that was supposed to happen, um, I guess it was supposed to happen last Friday. And it, it is, we are in the green phase, but with um, tighter restrictions and not everything that was said to be open in the green phase is, is not opening. So the, I think initially they said that indoor dining was going to open, but that's not happening thank goodness I feel um among other things so uh yeah and the other thing too which I know is happening in a lot of states uh and cities is the um you know the the requirement to wear masks um in public you know indoors and outdoors um when you're not able to keep uh, six uh, feet distance so you know I think a lot of us have already been following that rule but um, definitely I think that like reinforcement as like a mandate is going to be helpful in, in just messaging um, and yeah other than that we've you know we we'll continue to see protests in Philly um, in smaller uh, pockets oh, okay smaller pockets of protests around the neighborhood so just try to keep track of those Cool. I'm sure you're absorbing uh, a lot of information right now. <laughs> yes, it's kind of overwhelming, but in a good way. Right on. Well, it's so good to have you. Uh -huh. uh, do you want to pass it to someone else? Sure. Um, I don't think I know. Uh, did we already hear from... Oh, Kevin, we heard from you when you were not on screen. Okay. Um, how about Joe, uh, KPSQ? Uh, looks like you're on mute. Can you hear us, Joe, at KPSQ? No. There you are. Yeah, had to find the button. Had to find the picture of the mic. Otis is too modest, uh, though he does seem to time the problems for the weekend, which makes <laughs> me feel bad about calling him all the time on the weekend. Not all the time. It's pretty good. It's a good, good system. Um, so we're at Fayetteville, Arkansas, and in Washington County, and Washington County has been the hot spot in Arkansas for the past month or so. Um, there's chicken plants here, there's a Hispanic community and a lot of poultry workers are from that community. But it's been spreading through Northwest Arkansas. Our studio's been, it's in a hotel, the, a big hotel downtown and the hotel's been closed till last week. 
and uh, very few of our DJs go in to do live shows at this point, though since the hotel's opening, some of them are getting braver to go in. But it worries me in a studio uh, that's tightly closed with not much airflow, a small space, and uh, some of the folks have brought in guests, musicians, uh, and so on. So I'm always warning people about that. So we've done, we've moved a lot of things to um, home production and uh, sending things in. We've uh, set up ways for everyone to drop their shows in and so on, taught people how to do that. Uh, but as far as today's session, it's really, uh, it's, we, we, we had a whole telephone hybrid system set up in the studio, but now looking at trying to keep things current, since we don't have a lot of live DJs, um, with telephone interviews or other ways that various folks 15 will 15 seconds. Oh, okay. Well, I'm pretty much done. So the various people will be able to uh, do those uh, live talks or interviews we're looking at. Thanks, Joe. Uh, who do we have left? I think uh, Melinda Brown I saw as a new, a new name for me. How are you doing, Melinda? I'm good. I don't know if I'm coming through well or not, but Yep. Yeah, I can we're hear doing you. well. Okay. Yeah, we're doing well. Did you we're want to report? I joined a little bit late. We're in Redding, California, KFOI. Freedom of information. <laughs> so, Very yeah, nice. we are not a hot spot, but we are on I 5, which, you know, runs up and down California. But we are not a hot spot. It's really the transmissions are seen as when there is a grouping, whether it's family or church or something, there are some of those, but they're fairly limited. It, it's not widespread transmission is what our health officer is saying. So we're going with that. What's what station? KFOI in Northern California in Redding, top of the Central Valley. Redding, California. Cool. Well, so glad you could join us. Thank you. And we have, uh, is this Abby Otis, who you were talking about, who's joining us now? Yeah. Hi, Abby, how are you? Can you hear us, Abby? Oh, maybe he's still working on it. Okay. Did everyone get to talk? Who won? Uh, get a chance to talk. I didn't hear Sharon. Oh yeah, Sharon. Oh, I'm sorry, Sharon. There you are. <laughs> How are you, Sharon? Then I think I'll pass it to Nate. Were you wait, uh, Nate? I've tended late. Oh, Nate, 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 Sharon. Wait, Sharon. Sorry. Okay. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got uh, one part. <laughs> yeah, go <ahead. laughs> Is uh, Nate uh, from? Uh, uh, North Country Community Radio, WZNC. Uh, we are lo our studios in Bethlehem, New Hampshire. I mean, Littleton, New Hampshire, and our transmitters in Bethlehem. Um, so, yeah, we've we've had the station closed since March, and um, starting next week, we're gonna uh, just me and one other person are gonna go in there, and we're gonna uh, start sort of uh, it's phase one of our construction process, which. Um, uh, you know, we'll buy us some time to keep the studio closed and also work on uh, kind of changing up our policies at, at the same time. So, so that's what we're doing uh, to kind of, uh, you know, and just observe what, what's going on uh, and what's the smart, smartest thing to do in the meantime. So we figured during this downtime, we're going to just try and keep making progress, but sort of in a different way. All right. Yep. And I'm going to pass it to Sharon. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, so I'm Sharon Scott with WXOX LP in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, we are in the, you know, in the heart of a new revolution, I believe. Our city is, um, you know, just, it's, it's a, battle, a battleground. Right now, Breonna Taylor's uh, killers are still on our police force, and there's been protests uh, day and night all the time. Um, 
our, we're a mainly a music station, but we do focus on the arts too. All of our DJs have really um, become tuned into what's going on and, and it's reflecting in their shows. Um, the interviews that are being done on the arts shows right now, um, a lot of times they're going back to monuments and, um, and civil rights issues within the arts, which have been very interesting. All of our DJs are remote broadcasting, um, so they're, they're live, but they're at home. Uh, we've got about close to 100 DJs remote broadcasting, which is great, and that's going very well. But then it becomes very interesting. Um, sometimes the protests actually come and like will surround where, wherever the DJ is broadcasting, so they find themselves in the middle of these protests. But we do have some DJs that are going down to Breonna Taylor Square, which we, are, we have uh, recently renamed it. Um, and we have DJs live broadcasting from there. Um, recently, there's been a, a, what I would say a very concerted attack on independent media happening um, from our police force. And the live streamers, uh, two nights ago, they were absolutely targeted. Every single one of the live streams um, that we usually watch to see what's going on, they were all uh, picked up within an hour. And uh, except for one that got away, and then the next night they came back and got her. Um, so now our DJs are really wanting to step up, and um, we, in fact, I've I've pulled together some really like makeshift press passes or press credentials for them to have on when they're down, documenting what's going on um, on the scene because it's like wow. the, it's like the reporters are getting picked off, and so now our DJs want to step up. So I'd love to talk to you guys about safety and legal things uh, with them, even though it's not exactly the topic today. But, um, but then just another quick news, our, our, we had a big election this week, um, and a primary. 15 seconds. And our, um, and our internet connection to the tower went out uh, for about four hours that night, the night before the election, when we had a lot of very important programming happening. Um, that has encouraged us to want to move our tower to our actual studio site. So that's something else I'd love to hear from this crew about. But that's where we are, and let's see, has, who else hasn't gone yet, if there's anyone? Raise uh, we hand. have Sandra and Renee, Okay. Abby. Okay, uh, let's see, I passed it to Renee before, so let's try Sandra this time. Hi, thank you, and it's great to be with you all again, and um, I have a really weak internet connection, so I'm just gonna stick with audio. Um, I wanted to, th so I'm with WBPU Black Power 96 in St. Petersburg, Florida. I wanted to thank Otis for the help that you gave us to get our audio port um, uh, stuff going. Um, we, we began at the beginning of COVID to produce a show, uh, the People's War show, and um, and we've gotten a great response from that through the audio port as well as some other distributions. So, uh, couldn't have got that going on on audio port as the series without your help so really appreciate you helping us just get the account set up and that whole distribution process um we are still um operating although florida you know it's like oh yeah do whatever you want you know the governor is you know doesn't care or whatever but uh the station is still following um you know pretty serious protocols in terms of only a few of the um show hosts are coming into the station and um you know just being really careful with such a, a surge happening in florida right now uh, in terms of the uh, pandemic and um i am currently i had to come to washington state for some personal uh reasons and i'm so i'm currently in washington actually and um just i'm gonna have to look up uh skagit talk joseph because i uh, i actually just left mount vernon and we're out by aberdeen right now so um <laughs> but uh i have to uh I hadn't, I had, didn't know about that. So uh, good to know about that now. And I also was wondering from Sharon, if you, um, any of the programming that you're doing straight from the Breonna Taylor Square or, you know, any of the, any, if any of that stuff is available for distribution or if there's a way, you know, if you're packaging anything, um, any of those direct reports, um, I think uh, WBPU would be interested in that. And I just really appreciate the topic because uh, even with the People's War radio show that we've been getting a good response from, but I have to say our audio quality is inconsistent. We're doing a lot of interviews over the phone. We try Zoom, we try free conference call, you know, we're trying the different tools and 
it's just very inconsistent. And then just being able to take the live calls from the studio. We went from a uh, legacy telos box mm -hmm. that kept getting <clears throat> okay. We had a telos box. It got and kept getting fried, and you know we're just looking for other solutions for <clears throat> taking live calls in the studio. So I look forward to the topic today. Thank you. <clears throat> Fantastic. Okay, so we'll do the the caller uh, remote caller interview set up, and then Sharon has some things, and Sandra has a topic to ask about. And uh, we have uh, Renee. How are you doing? Oh, we're doing okay. Uh, no new <laughs> developments. Still close. We won't have the. Uh, we have some folks doing remotes from home. KKU uh, eighty-eight point five FM, the voice of Maui. Um, we're trying to keep our numbers down as far as COVID nineteen are concerned, and so far so good for our island. Uh, on Oahu, they keep getting bigger and bigger numbers, so we're trying to keep things under control here. So in the meantime, uh, we're trying to get all of our hosts to do Zoom meetings, and some are objecting. We've got a couple that are finally coming around, but in the meantime, we're doing okay. It seems like it could be either both safer and or more dangerous to be on an island, depending on how people. Exactly. That's uh, more extremes uh, in both areas. Yeah. We've been really good here. We really have uh, only, I think, one new case yesterday. But Oahu is going out of control. As they're getting big numbers every day now. So hopefully, after uh, Fourth of July, we'll see what happens. Hopefully oh we'll stay yeah. Free. So are they suspending travel from each island to each. No, it's actually just open travel from island oh. to island. So we'll see how that's going to work. Keep our fingers <laughs> crossed. Yeah. I like your hair, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's very, it's very bright. <laughs> you look like you're not sure. Do you like it or not? Mm -hmm. I didn't hear you. You look like you're not sure if you like it or not. Are you having mixed oh, feelings? I love it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, let's see is that uh abby can you hear us I, I saw a thumbs up from you earlier yeah i can hear you guys can you hear me yes how are you doing oh, okay i'm doing pretty well so i'm out of houston uh i have volunteered with the kpft pacifica station here uh, in the past with their news programming and um, some of their music shows, but I haven't been by in a while. Mainly have just been loosely keeping in touch with Otis and I've helped Otis in the past create documentation for the Confessor Archive um, for the GRT conference a few years back. And he invited me to attend, so I'm just here to listen. Uh, and just one question that I have is, is everybody on this call like part of the affiliates program or Pacifica or? Yep, that's it exactly. Yep, well, yes to both of those things. Okay, all right. Well, good to see everyone and uh, nice to meet you. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Okay, is that everybody? I think we got everybody. Okay, let's start. So the question is for uh, Mike McCormick. He wants, he's asking people to share explanations of the equipment and layout of caller slash remote interview setup. Um, what kind of hardware slash software are they using? How many callers, interviewers can be handled, well, handled at once? Um, and let's start with uh, Joseph McGuire. Thank you. Um, I just want to preface this that all of our DJs are recording programs and sending them to the radio station. No one's at the radio station at all. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> so uh, uh, I have 
when, before this all began, I, we used the standard, uh, well, we actually had people come in and, and the studio and we recorded it because Skagit Talks is all pre-recorded. We don't do live interviews, but there have been people who did live music interviews and we did, they did, they would just have them uh, call into our Tello system and that's how they did it. So after this, after I was uh, sent here home and uh, how we were going to do this, um, there was people who said we should use Zoom and I used Zoom and I found out that Zoom has a terrible sound. Putting aside if the person has uh, making the, the interviewee is on a computer with using the internal mic and such. Uh, it was just adding more bad sound. So I researched and looked for other things. And I found basically three podcast hosting uh, remote interview sites called Clean Feed, which I think they're going to be talking about next week. Yep, that's right. And uh, Zencaster and uh, relatively new to this, Squadcast. Now, I also do Radio Theater Project, and I'm not going to have actors come in and do recording together, so I have actually used Clean Feed for that. But um, Squadcast is the one I chose for doing interviews, uh, and I'll show you what the, the interface, I'm going to screen share the interface here in just a minute. Um, and <clears throat> uh, the difference between the three squadcast zencaster and clean feed is squadcast or uh, zencaster and clean feed has a free feature and uh squadcast has an inexpensive uh, version it starts at an a level of price but um so um i looked at squadcast and uh what i liked about Squadcast is um, unlike Clean Feed, which is audio only, it has a video portion. You don't record the video like you do with Zoom, but you can see the person in front of you. And I think that helps when you're interviewing someone to see how they're reacting to your questions. And specifically, we record uh, them like they were kind of live for 14 minutes. We have what I call a focused conversation. And then, uh, so they're just record. They're just talking about a topic, and then, um, then um, the 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 other reason I like the idea, and this is something Zencaster kind of does, is that the audio is recorded at each person's computer, and then when you're done, it's loaded up to their cloud. Now, this is the difference between Zencaster and Squadcast is Zencaster loads it up to your own personal Dropbox, whereas Squadcast actually has a cloud server where it uploads the WAV file. Um, the free version of Zencaster is MP3, but the free version of CleanFeed is WAV. But the, uh, the other thing I liked about Squadcast uh, is that it... Uh, does each person, each person who's interviewed gets their own separate track that you can drop into a digital audio workstation. And so in other words, it records their voice, but not the voice of the other person. And then the other one records their voice and not, not the voice of the other person. So it's really easy to edit out some glitches that appear in the empty spaces. So like sometimes there is a um, kind of a loop back, little sounds that appear in the other person's feed. You can just get rid of those. And that's what I like about um, uh, that multi-track uh, interviewing, uh, uh, each person getting their own track. And then of course, we're talking about the high definition that it's a, a WAV file that's downloaded and um, that's another thing I like about Squadcast because it holds the WAV file till you download it and then you have to delete it. So 
it actually saves the backup and you actually don't have to have an extra big drop box or anything like that. So, um, of course, there's a cost for this. Um, there's a cost for Zoom. If you want to use Zoom and it's uh, highly compressed MP3 for MP4 format and highly compressed sound, you know, it's like, I don't know, I think it's what, $14 a month or $20 a month or something like that. Well, you can start Squadcast at $5 a month for one hour, $10 a month for two hours. Basically, every hour you, five hours is $20 a month and so forth and so on. But that can be a downside because if you don't have the money, you can't afford it. <laughs> and so, um, but um, we got the the whole year for, you know, I'm not trying to say that, that to anyone, this is the one you get, but this is why we did this. And so we got the whole year for $200 or thereabouts. So then, um, uh, according to their website, it says it will be used, it, you can use any browser. And this is another reason I like it is you don't have to have, uh, you don't have to have a, it's a web app. You don't have to have um, a, a host app like you do with Zoom. And Zencaster is a web app as well, and so is CleanFeed. And so that's why I like those. And you just send out the link and people just pop up. You don't have to... Um, have a specific program and they don't have to be a member. But to do that, the best program to use, the best web browser to use is Chrome. Some people have a problem with that. They, they don't want to bow down to our Google masters. And so um, I have tried Firefox and they say it works with Firefox and I have found it not working with Firefox. Or if it does work with Firefox, it works very poorly with Firefox because Chrome uses what's called Opus Codec, but so does Opera, Edge, and Brave. So I think those others three will work as well. So if you don't want to do Chrome, I think Opera or Edge for those who have Microsoft Windows only, you know, and Brave, it seems to work that way because they also have the Opus Codec. And the one of the, the bigger problems that isn't a problem for me is that you can only have four people at a time in its uh, uh, on, on board. Now, I'm not an interviewer. I have people who do the interviews for me. I'm just a, 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 an engineer. I'm a producer. And so one of those people is me, who doesn't have a soundtrack, but it creates a soundtrack for me. And so it's just a quiet track. And um, but so I would have me plus uh, interviewer plus possibly two other people. So one of the things we decided to do with, with any um, version of doing this remotely is at least we had to have the interviewers have good mics. Um, we don't ask the other people to go out and buy mics, though I've discovered that if you use earbuds with um, the microphone for your telephone, for your cell phone, that works pretty good as a replacement for a mic like this. Um, anyway, so we have a good interviewer, so we might have problematic sound with them talking into their computer, but we at least have a good baseline. The, the, the interviewer sounds good. And um, so uh, what I'd like to do now is uh, share my screen and just show you what the what it looks like. Okay, so. Okay, great. So when you click through, you this um, you will get what this looks like. There's recording sessions, uh, ability to join, and sessions. Now it doesn't change the sessions um, link. So what I've done is I set up all my interviewers with their own sessions so that I can look and see like here's a session that we did in the past with the three recordings, me who's just quiet, uh, Kyle Collins and Dr. Howard Librand from the public health department here. And then I can just download them anytime I want 
just by um, clicking on the download wave. If you have a small amount of, or you know, your internet isn't as fast, they have an MP3 version. And so when you um, join, You, are, you enter into what they call a green room. Hopefully this will work. <laughs> there we go. And it makes sure that you have a microphone and, and a headphone and what it's connected and you can type in the person's name and then uh, eventually it picks up and there's me being me. <laughs> and then just click on join session and there's the default microphone and of course it asks for um, uh, uh, um, it asks for uh, that you have uh, permission to have the can permission to have the microphone, and so that's what a person who faces. They just hit the join button, and then they're in there and they're uh, together, just like we are on our Zoom uh, meeting. And then um, I'm going to stop sharing now. And so um, uh, there's been some, you know, hitches along the lane. Sometimes if the, the computer, the person, the interviewer or E has a bad connection, well, that means it'll be a bad sound. There's nothing you can do about that. You can try and bring them out, bring them in. So there are some quirks with Squadcast. Sometimes if you come in, it's not... Uh, connected very well so you just ask people or whoever to go out and then come back in and that usually clears up anything and so um, since I don't do any live uh, phone call or live interviews I can't uh, talk to how you can do this with live interviews I suppose you could be on Squadcast uh, not recording, or you could just record as you need to, and then just feed that to what, however you do a live broadcast anyway. So um, you could probably even just do that with Zoom without uh, recording, but it's still, the, their sound is very compressed too. And you, you, could, you could probably do that with any of these uh, web conference tools. So pretty much, I guess, any questions? I see Sandra asked in the in the chat. Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> can the guest receive a link on their phone and participate through their phone? Um, no. It will not work with iOS or uh, Android. I I asked them that specifically. Is it? Did I miss any other questions? No, I mean that's okay. If I. I uh, I, I'm I'm happy to read the questions. Okay, good. <laughs> Is, are, <laughs> are there any other questions that are coming up with you guys? I guess I have a question. Um, Joseph, can as many DJs as you want um, access this program? Could you uh, open it up to your whole staff? Um, if we shared the, the, the username, and I mean, if you're talking about to host a meeting? Yes. Um, only if we shared the username and password to the, to the, to the, to the. Okay. Gotcha. That makes sense. And you're saying that you could, um, just live stream it. Like if you could pull it up in your station computer. Um, uh, that would be my guess. I'm, I'm not, you know, completely cognizant of how that would work because I, we don't do that here. Right. I got you. And have you, um, have you compared the sound with Squadcast, Zencaster and clean feed? Uh, only clean feed. Uh, I didn't want to talk too much about clean feed because they're going to be talking about that next week. But the reason I didn't choose clean feed for doing this is because clean feed records their WAV file into the host's computer through their browser. And so whatever internet artifacting comes in will be, so the, the way Zencaster and Squadcast works is it records at the source. And then it uploads to the Squadcast uh, um, web server or uh, cloud server or to the, with, with uh, Zencaster up to their 
uh, Dropbox. I have heard people say Sencaster can sometimes be out of sync, but I'm not sure how that works because you got two files and you can always resync it. I don't know. <laughs> Looks like yeah, Avi used Zencaster. Yeah, that's yeah, right. I used Zencaster um, to record interviews, just two people. Um, I don't know what the limit is on that, but <clears throat> it seemed very quick and easy. I was on my um, phone and the person doing the interviewing was on their computer. Okay. And yeah, I think they did all the editing, but it was able to split it up into two tracks, uh, one for each speaker. And... Yeah, I just, he had a professional or more professional microphone set up at his house or office. And I just use, you know, iPhone headphones. Which doesn't and sound bad. Yeah, that's what I'm on right now. And um, yeah, so I guess there are a couple options out there. And mm -hmm. I think you're right. It doesn't have video. Zencaster doesn't have video. But I had a good experience doing an audio, a couple audio only interviews. Well, again, uh, you can get the free version of Zencaster and it just allows you to have an, each person have an MP3 of their, and as long as you, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of MP3s as original source, but you, once you upload it, get it opened up and then save it as a un, uncompressed file, you're, you're usually good with the first generation of MP3. What's the, what is the resolution? Did you notice? For? Of the MP3. Um, no, I did not notice on, on, on Zencaster. It could have been three, 360, I think, is the highest one. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. That's Seems almost a lot better. As a wave. Seems a lot yeah, better. Yeah, the, 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 it sounds like it's, uh, uh, those are, pretty well, uh, really well set up for uh, interviews that you're going to edit. Uh, one of the advantages of clean feed is you can, you can use it on your phone, but you've got to download an app. Oh, can you? I didn't, I, I never noticed that. Yeah, there's an app. It, it, it's sort of when somebody invites you, I can't remember how we did it. We, it, cause we've been playing with it and um, essentially got me hooked up in some way and I think there was an app a, a small app involved and then we had some trouble connecting and you know my takeaway from that is that's hard to do with an interviewee you know unless they're tech savvy yep that's um, that's my opinion <laughs> you know I, I'm the end of you said your thing about Google, so I'll say this thing about Microsoft. I mean, I've, <laughs> it's okay. I'm a I, Mac guy. <laughs> I, yeah, well, so am I. But but Mac, uh, they're, well, they're the new. I'm sorry, Apple is the new Microsoft. But anyway, <laughs> I find Skype works pretty well if you are hooked up to Skype with a with an with an iPhone and a decent speaker. It doesn't go through the the regular filter that landlines and the hmm. telephone system interesting because the the microsoft the uh the cell phone network doesn't have that filter in it ah only really when it gets into the landline then it starts getting bad i think i'm right about that so i could use skype also i could use skype from a computer and uh i have uh i don't have the, the sound is not filtered I find Skype is, works pretty well. Uh, I it's had problems flaky with Skype. when you conference people in. But... <laughs> the other thing about CleanFeed is that, that their, uh, their free service, which is Wave, but like I said, it has problems with yeah. internet artifacting. It does as many people as you want in their free yeah. version. And I think Zencaster is the same way too. So Sandra was clarifying too. She's asking, um, so you have multiple tracks, one for each person, and it loads as a single file into Audition or some editing software? Um, no, it loads into multiple track files in a digital audio workstation. Yeah. 
Okay. Which you could do use Audacity as. You can. My personal personal favorite is Reaper. I was <laughs> going to say know. Reaper, of course. <laughs> um, the, the, that's an old technique uh, where you would record uh, at individual stations. You get somebody in a studio, then you talk on the phone, but they're recording it. So then you could just ship that file one way or another. We and, did that once with the BBC. <laughs> yeah, with the, I mean, that's the classic places. The, B, the BBC loves to do it. So <laughs> that way, any problems or anything like that, you could sync up in the editing. And it's much easier these days with digital audio workstations. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, hey, that's, but, that's fun. And Reaper, you... I would recommend Reaper to anybody, by the way. Once you get past the options, it's great. Yes, Sharon? Joseph, I was wondering, because um, we did that thing for the BBC, too, where they had someone they wanted to interview here in Louisville, that, but their interviewer was in England and London. And so we recorded, you know, the guy here and then sent the audio to them. And then they recorded the audio with their DJ. And, and then they compiled it together, which sounds like a similar concept as mm -hmm. on here. But as we remodel our studio, we're interested. We were anyway, contemplating getting um, a Comrex, which would allow, you know, um, easier internet connections with other radio stations. Do you think this would make something like that obsolete, the ability to do it all online? Well, actually, um, the, the program that makes that obsolete is something called Source Connect. Okay, <laughs> totally different subject. <laughs> well, it's, it, it you still uses the Opus codec, and it's, uh, we... Uh, we had a Telos. We actually bought a brand new Telos, but we were doing live remotes with Source Connect, the free version. Okay. And uh, a lot of voice actor people have to use Source Connect. It replaces ISDN. Okay. Thanks for that tip. I'll, I'll ask you more about that later. Thank you. Anyone else have questions for Joseph? Okay. Well, thanks, Joseph. I really appreciate your talk. You're very welcome. I hope it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was. Thank you. Um, well, let's move on to Davine. Davine has her set up as a, a cell phone with an audio input. Well, um, so we had a telos. We, when we got the station, when the license was transferred to us, we had a telos. But at that time, there wasn't a landline hooked up to it, so we never used it. And so we ended up looking into, AT&T was the carrier in, in our neighborhood, and I hate AT&T. So I put off doing it. And then a couple of years ago, someone upgraded. We have a 1982 or 85 analog board. And it had several modules that were not hooked up to anything. So he put in a accessory mod, an accessory input that will, that will take a quarter inch uh, audio connector and convert that, that can be converted to an eighth of an inch audio connector. And then so people can either hook up their phone to it and you know turn the uh, accessory module on and then that goes out on the air so that you can hook up your phone you could actually do a laptop you could connect your laptop and do a skype or a zoom interview uh through using that accessory input and um it's pretty uh simple but it works really well and um the other very simple way, if you don't have the accessory input, uh, you do need to stress to whoever the guest is calling in or on their phone, they need to have as good a connection as they can possibly have, preferably a landline if they've got it, or they need to make sure that their cellular connection is really a good strong signal. And then you can cook, hook up, uh, you can just put that right in front of the mic and pick up that person, uh, make that mic hot, and um, uh, send the uh, conversation out on, on the airways app. 
So those are two very simple ways, or actually three, because you could be using either um, a phone, a computer, or a, a phone hooked up to a mic. Any questions? Any questions for Davy? And this is for in, in studio. This is not for recording uh, remotely and sending the file in. This is for live, live interviews. Mm. Well, thank you very much, Davy. You're welcome. Thank you. Hopefully we get back to the studio soon. <laughs> that would be that's that's safe, but not too soon, right? <laughs> Look forward to that. Um, Okay, well, Peggy and Todd did not, were not able to make it today. I know Peggy Berryhill, she said she had a bunch, she did a bunch of things. Um, and Todd Tyson uh, was talking about uh, a Telos phone hybrid linked to its own channel. Does that sound familiar to you guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need AT&T or something. Uh, you, need a, you need a landline, I think. Yeah, it, uh, yes, yes, that's what he said. Better for a landline. That's but that's pretty standard uh, how you hook up most uh, hybrids. Okay, okay. So that's something to look up to as, as an option. Um, there was one thing, if I may, to add further. The one thing about these different fleet feeds, Squadcast stuff, is all you need is a computer and a microphone. So that's all I wanted to add. Oh, uh, that's nice. Yeah for talking about simplicity. Anyone else have anything to add to that? Um, I actually, um, there's a tool that's interesting. I haven't used it um, like myself for any major projects, but um, there's a tool which is pretty good for recording, uh, you know, full programs and also interviews, um, just if you're restricted to just a phone. So even simpler than, you know, just having a laptop and, a, and hopefully an external mic. Um, what we're finding is that a lot of guests don't have external mics. Um, and even some hosts, you know, don't have uh, access to computers or, you know, have, you know, um, internet problems. You know, most people have a smartphone these days or many people do. So um, Anchor FM or Anchor is the app, if you guys are familiar with that. It's meant for podcasters, um, but it, you know, works for radio as well. Um, and I think there is a paid version, but, you know, my experience has been with the free version, which is really great for being free. Um, and uh, I would just encourage you guys to, to check it out. There's like, you know, tons of tutorials on YouTube and they've got a ton of information on their website. But uh, like I think Otis was saying, you know, Skype is nice because, um, yeah, Anchor FM. Mm -hmm. Uh, to, to Sandra. Um, I think Otis was talking about how Skype is nice because it doesn't, you know, you're not going through a phone line where you're going to get that audio. And the same thing is true. I think that most people have, uh, if they have an iPhone or an Android, the, you know, the, the mic on your phone is actually decent. You know, that's definitely broadcast quality. So to have Anchor, um, you know, just pick up your, your phone's, uh, you know, audio um, or microphone it's the sound quality is really good. Um, and so it does have a, a tool or a feature where you can invite somebody to like enter the recording space. I haven't tested it out too many times myself, so it's hard to give you a personal anecdote about that, but I do know that it's a feature. So uh, it is an app is the thing I do think you have to download it. There's also a web version as well, which is interesting. Um, so I think if you were to invite a guest, you might have to ask them to download the app, which is a little bit of a, bummer but um that's just a tool to look into for anybody who's like you know just just uh dealing with phones awesome thanks allison mm -hmm. does anyone have any questions about for allison okay well let's move on. i don't know if you were talking but i think you were on mute me? Uh, Otis. Oh, Otis. Did you have something to add, Otis? Otis is somewhere else. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Uh, let's go to Sharon. Uh, you said you had you wanted to um, bring something to the group. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for this is great information. Um, we we've also traditionally interviewed folks in studio, so it's a big uh, curve to learn new, this new technology. Um, we've been. I think the DJs have been using Zoom a lot because it's just easy, and that's what everybody's using right now. But um, I recently heard an interview with one of our DJs, and her voice sounded so different. I literally thought that there was an actor that had read the script that she wrote and, and was reading it. It was, it was, but it was so strange because it was all her same inflections, but a totally different voice. So um, it really can, and then it really soured her experience. Um, this was a big national news thing and, and she was so embarrassed. It made her voice like really deep, you know, and, and as a woman, you know, that could hmm. be kind of unsettling. Yeah. And so she was so disappointed, it kind of ruined her whole like exciting experience with this interview. So do think about the sound and how it's gonna affect uh, your, your people that you're interviewing. Um, and it, I think it's a good idea too, Joseph mentioned that having them, you know, see if they have a microphone or if they have even just earbuds with a mic on it, that could really help. So anyway, thank you for the conversation. Looking forward to next week too. Um, yeah, for us, um, the, the situation just continues um, with the protests and, um, and us as a music and arts focused radio station all of a sudden finding ourselves in the middle of of a social revolution. I mean, literally, um, our station is within walking distance of where this is all going down. And um, so just now that our DJs want to start covering, uh, doing some more news type coverage of, of what's happening, I'm concerned about, a you know, first of all, their safety. Um, the police have been very aggressive here. They seem to have stopped using the chemical weapons, at least temporarily, um, but the, you know, the, the rubber bullets are still definitely happening, the batons, um, people getting beaten and dragged away by cops. And now specifically seeming like independent press is getting targeted. So when a, one of my DJs contacted me last night wanting a press pass, it's kind of like, I don't know if that's going to help you or hurt you. <laughs> you know, I don't know if it makes you more of a target from the police or yeah. if it helps you um, in terms of freedom of press. So... So literally, I made these like this is this is the sample one, the, the ones that uh, we we did. I don't know if you can see it because my background, but we made these. I mean, like literally, like we were cutting and pasting, you know, foil crafting paper and trying to make something reflective and interesting uh, for a press pass. But so I was, guess I was going to ask one question. I have is, do you guys have official press passes? And if so, uh, where did you get them? And what kind of information uh, do you need to include? That would be my first question. And just as a side note, I know we're at an hour, so if anyone needs to take off, just drop a note in the chat, and that's fine. And we might, we'll probably go over um, what we normally do. So, Sharon, I think as long as you have an FCC license, and uh, the, those people are associated with you, uh, what we did is we did a QR code on the press pass that takes them to our website. But we also supply them with a copy of our FCC license. And so they have that on their person. And as I said in the chat, you need to check your state uh, statutes for uh, people to f uh, videotape or film on the street and have a copy of that on you if your state allows it. Our state does allow it. So, so we know that, that uh, they can't stop us from uh, filming uh, because uh, we have a legal right to do it. On anyth anything that is paid by the taxpayer, which streets are, then uh, we're, we're able to uh, film without permission. That would include sidewalks too, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, or did, you, did you make some press passes? How did you? Yeah, let me see. If, I'll, I'll try to pull one up and I'll share the screen when I find it and pull it out of um, Photoshop. So just give me a couple minutes. And then did you print them up yourselves? Or? Yes. Yeah. I've got a laser printer that prints really high quality. Okay. And I put it on cardstock and take it to um, Staples and have them lam laminated. Cool. My laminator is the best 20 bucks I ever spent. <laughs> Just a side note. 
I don't I, I found these really cheap. I just got to brag about it. It's like, uh, again, I don't know if you can see it because of my background, but it's a sling line laminator. It was literally like $20 at the, at the Office Depot. I use it all the time. <laughs> so, anyway, fun stuff. Um, does anybody else have suggestions on press passes or where to get them? You know, they're, sometimes you see these really professional I, printed plastic. I made them, I made them for, uh, for us, for uh, Pacifica, for the conventions. But it's, you know, the, what you got from, who was it who sent you that note about the requirements? Uh, it's very easy to do because there are web pages that will give you that cue uh, thing if you haven't done it already. That's a good idea. You said what information. That's a good idea. Not, no, it. now I'm not muted. Okay. I'm, yes, I'm talking. I can see. I it. heard you. Yeah. Thank you. But anyway, uh, it's very, you know, it's really easy to do. And then, then I just went to uh, FedEx and laminated them there. But it's cool if you have a laminator. Yeah. And, then, and then neck tag. Oh. And it, it's much better if you have a lot of junk on there with your press pass because it looks like you've been around a long time. <laughs> you know, you see Pro them, they, they, they never take them off. <laughs> but what you're doing is works for, I have, Press passes, but they're in in uh, um, in uh, um, what is the the old uh, macromedia uh, graphic uh, graphic app, which uh, you don't have. Nobody has it because Adobe killed it. <clears throat> hey, share, share I, can my, share mine. I, I can share mine now on the screen. I was going to say, my, my recommendation is that probably the most important thing is that you have in big block letters, press. Right. Yeah. yeah. That, that's, your logo doesn't matter. They don't care because they don't know what that means. But if it says press in really large letters, that's probably the most important thing. Yeah, mine, mine has some print on it saying, please extend courtesy and stuff like that. But it, up at the top, it says press. Yeah. That looks great, Dubbing. That's really good. What's the barcode? Uh, that's our QR code for our, our uh, website. On the back, but on the front, there's looks like more of a Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. It's the same. Okay. QR cool. code. Okay, yeah, cool. take them to our website. And then, you know, all of our bona fides are on there. Like, you know, all of our stuff oh. about that we have on the FCC. So we can link to our FCC page and all of that. That's and so good. each one, I just take a picture of them and make, make up... Um, press passes on um, Photoshop. That's awesome. Thank you. Great. What about um, like vests and stuff? Like those, you know, sometimes you see the press wearing those reflective vests. Do you guys got any tips on that or? They're for sale. <laughs> yeah, <I know>. Amazon. <laughs> you can buy them on Amazon. Our local newspaper, they just put <laughs> black tape to, to make press, to print press on the back in front of their vest that they were wearing because they showed it what they were doing, black electrical tape, and they made press on the back in front of their Dayglo uh, vest. Mm. Get one of those little brown hats with the card on the side. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, and then what about, this is kind of the same topic, and, I'll, and then I'll be quiet. <laughs> But what about liability and the station's liability if someone is, say, I mean, like I said, the reporters are really getting snatched up downtown. Are we responsible uh, for what happens to our reporter if they're wearing a press pass? Sure. Both in terms of legal and, and you know, if something happens, they get hurt or something. What everybody is, is. Everybody is. I mean, when, when anyone goes after anybody, they go after everybody. You know, and see, say, throw it everywhere and see what, where it'll stick. So, sure. so in that regard, does our liability cover us if we're out on the street? For depends on your, uh, probably depends on your liability uh, on your insurance, because there might be some exclusion of, you know, if anybody's actually doing any work, then they're not covered. You know, I mean, the insurance company's job is to make money. Right. A lot of know. this That's is a just, really good question. A lot of this is just. Uh, a lawyer you'd have to ask because I don't yeah. know. We, we're, we're not lawyers. I don't play right. with <laughs> Exactly. 
I will say if you ask somebody to go out and report, you're absolutely liable. If they do it on their own and they're taking their own initiative, your liability is much less. I was wondering about getting the DJ just to, you know, write a statement that we had warned them about the dangers and that they had, you know, decided on their own well, to do this. They're, they're going to go after anybody who has money, no matter what you do. And well, then the, we're court, free. the court will determine whether or not you were liable. You know, they're they going to make your life miserable. No matter what you do, if you could say, I'm operating entirely on my own. And if they have any idea that you're doing anything for the station, they'll go after the station, go after the station's owner, go after the owner's, you know, grandfather. I mean, everybody gets involved because, yeah. you know, that's how, that's how it works. It's crazy, but that's it. Well, we'll see what happens, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's happening? I'm just curious. Are, what happens if you're, you know, filming somebody whose knee is on somebody's neck in Louisville? Will they, they're going to make you stop? You're muted. Yeah, they'll, uh, they'll beat you up and take you to jail. That's what's going to happen. For, for taking pictures, they have a rule that you're not yeah. allowed to take pictures of well, police in action? Well, they, you know, they pin it that you're, um, you're threatening the life of a police officer. By taking a, a picture of them. Yeah, the uh, live streamers, two of them have gotten felonies uh, for streaming. You know, wow, that's peaceful. great. Okay. I mean, I was live streaming both of them and saw their arrests and then the next day uh, they showed up with felony. Of course, the, uh, the African-American live streamers got felonies and the white, the white streamers got misdemeanors. They were in the exact same place, doing the exact same thing and behaving so you're saying, all of them in very respectful ways to the police officer. So justice is still working well in, in Kentucky. Hey, the way even it has uh, Amy McGrath. hundreds of years. Yeah, well. We'll see. So uh, we're, we're in a tough place here in Louisville. We are, we really are. But we're at the, the front of what I hope will be a positive revolution uh, worldwide. So that's all we can do is just stay positive and hope that this is all for some kind of reason. It's rough though. I mean, people are really getting hurt every day by our police officers. Um, they, they rammed, they took one of their big, I don't know what they call their giant tanks or whatever that they have. Um, but they rammed one of the, a live streamer had jumped in someone's car and they rammed that person's car to try to catch the live streamer. The person, there was a collision. The live streamer got out and ran. They arrested the driver, took that driver in, uh, with, ended up with a felony charge, and they said that the person had charged the vehicle, the police vehicle. But what, it wasn't true because we all watched it on the live stream. And for two days, the police insisted that a protester had rammed a police vehicle. They used that as an excuse to round up a lot of other protesters and, um, Today, the police finally retracted that and said that it was, in fact, their vehicle that caused the collision. But the only reason they did that is, of course, because it was on video. So uh, the live streamers are, are a lifeline for the protesters right now. Yeah. Um, it's really important, and we, we want to we help, but, um, but it, it's dangerous out there. It really is. So we'll see. Doesn't look like anything's going to change either. The Metro Council had an opportunity to um, step in and do something about the police, and we really hope they would. But they voted twenty-four to one to actually increase the funding for the police department. And really? They, yeah, yeah. Defund the libraries is their motto, I guess. So you know, it's interesting times. Well, sure. But anyway, thank you all for listening, and I really appreciate you guys uh, being a, a great source of information every week because things are hot here for sure. Didn't we have a lawyer at the last? We had a lawyer at the last uh, GRC meeting in New York. Um, yeah. I wonder if we could get a, a hold of him and have him talk to us. Oh, I don't remember. I can't remember his right? name. He's in DC. He's in, he's in DC. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Ursula knows. It seems to me he was in Tacoma Park. Michael Richards. Hmm? Yeah. Michael Richards. Yeah. Michael Richards. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I didn't talk to him, but he 
he talked about stuff. He's a lawyer. <laughs> so what's happening with the GRC, Sharon? Digital GRC this year. Did you get the survey? Notice? Yeah. You want I help? Think I, I think I filled it out. Okay. I, have to, I, I think need to look I at it. I actually filled it out. So. Good. I got to look at it again. Yeah, we need to. So for everyone here, um, hopefully you've been to a grassroots radio conference before. It's an amazing gathering of community radio minds. It's, it's where I learned about the LPFM opportunity, and now I have an LPFM. So I owe my uh, station's life to the GRC. <laughs> it's a great one. The one question that was interesting was, do you want to have a big thing in a big event or do you want to string it out? And I'm curious what kind of response you got for that. It was more people seemed interested in, and the question for those who didn't uh, get the email and I can send it out to, I don't know if I sent it to the Pacifica group or not, but so this year we were supposed to host the GRC here in Louisville this year. Um, due to the pandemic, we've decided to do a virtual GRC this year, which we, you know, as soon as like these national emergencies give me a minute to breathe, uh, we'll get busy on that, but I would love to have your input. Um, and so we'd like to do a virtual GRC this year. And the question was, yeah. would we do it just in like, a, usually GRC is three or four days, would we do it in that short amount of time, really intensive GRC uh, sessions? or spread it out you know, <laughs> so that we could, uh, or however long, so that we could kind of spread it out since it's online and we don't all probably want to be sitting in front of our computers all day, every day. Um, so those were the, the choices and most people seem to want to spread it out a little bit. I don't know what the thoughts are. That's what I said. So we'd love some help, Otis. Definitely would need some technical help. Um, you know, and, and some input from this group. Yeah, you can help, right? Yeah, well, you know, you know how, how to get hold of me. So. Yeah, I know, I just got sure. you. Sure, I mean, it sounds like, sounds like fun. Yeah. I, I, one of the things I think what you did, you know, the thing you did a few weeks ago, and John and I have been working on that too. And I'm doing a show uh, every night with a guy named Jim Dingman. Some of you may know him. Uh, he's uh, New York. Uh, been around BAI forever and is a very interesting guy. So we started doing a show called Going Viral and we just do two hours every night and we're just streaming it. Nobody's listening, but we're doing it. And it's it's interesting, but it's all using, in this case, uh, uh, Audio Hijack Pro, which I'm sure Joseph knows about. And, you know, you build a console, you can build it with these pieces. But there's also one that this guy in England put together called uh, Talk Meter for the PC. And the PC is much more difficult than a Mac uh, to do audio on. Um, and of course, this is all audio without <coughs> physical equipment, which still works. You know, obviously mixers are handy, but it's amazing what you could do with this, with all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so I could sit here and actually run the show. And I mean, I, I could feed stuff. I can, you know, feed, we're, feed clips in uh, it's Skype. It could be clean feed, but we couldn't get his clean feed thing to work because he couldn't keep the level low enough. It was, it was blowing it out of the water. I mean, I don't know why. But anyway, all that stuff, I'm, you know, we're hearing from people, I think, everywhere. How can I do a live show at home? And, you know, you've been doing it, Sharon. You I mean, you've been really out in front yeah. with that. Wow. Uh, they've been doing it at BAI. John has set up BAI so that the, the they have three engineer shifts there. So they all have an engineer. Theoretically, you have an engineer and people come in and do their shows. So he's actually set it up so that they could do their engineering from home. They could do master, what amounts to master control from home. Um, and it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's actually working pretty well, I think. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that it could be cool, you know, even though definitely we're going to miss seeing everybody in person, that's the best part of GRC, mm -hmm. but it could be really cool, you know, to, you know, have people do these digital demonstrations, you know, in their mm -hmm. own studios and things like that. Yeah. How it's all working, so. yeah. The whole point of it, it's, you know, it, as we all know, GRC, it's not about the, the set sessions. They're all nice, 
Yeah. It's about meeting people in the hall. Exactly. That's, that's where the action is. Your Joseph, right. we, we we're gonna say something. He's muted. Um anyway. So maybe that could be a conversation sometimes, Stephanie. I don't I don't wanna Yeah, I was just gonna ask you that if you wanted to set up a, a round table for feedback on, on GRC stuff. I would love that. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, just I've let me know. Like this before. <laughs> I, it's uh, from what I've heard. It sounds like a big undertaking. <laughs> yeah, in the middle of two national emergencies. <laughs> yeah. No. Whatever. No problem. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> if you wanna, yeah, let me know um, when you wanna set up a time, when, a day, and. Uh, I, mean, I guess the sooner the better. I know we've got something next week, but you know. You wanna just set up the week after that, then? Sure. That'd be great. Okay, let's do it. Please bring your input and advice, especially if anyone's been to an online conference. I know there have been a few happening already. Um, but my, this group right here is kind of my first experience with this whole uh, digital communication in a group setting. So uh, got a lot to learn, that's for sure. That's true. We have been having lots of practice since COVID started. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Stephanie, <laughs> for making it happen. Wonderful. I was wondering if I could ask a question. Uh, that's um, about the audio port. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, podcasting, hosting, anything on that? What do you mean? It's just an RSS feed. I'm not sure what you mean. Well, the public podcasting. You were, you have the internal podcasting, but weren't you setting up a oh the the, the podcast public podcast website that it's what do you yeah. want to get involved because you would, we need beta testers. We need people who can be frustrated and still come back for more. Well, I wouldn't mind helping out. Get his name and yeah. Know, write him um, up. Can you write your email, Joseph, on the um, sure chat? Anyone else who, too who wants to give feedback? Um, We're very close. <laughs> I say that every time. <laughs> I was just curious. It's been like a couple, three or four months since I've done this. So I, there's my email. There we are. Okay. And I have to go to another Zoom in just a couple minutes. <laughs> okay. Well, thank Where's you again KSVR? for your contribution Where? and your knowledge. Where's say again? K Where's KSVR? Mount Vernon, Washington. Oh, okay. Oh, Rich with, uh, uh, I can't name his name. Rip Robbins. He's yeah, he's Rip long Robbins, retired yes. last, three years ago, four years ago. I know. I mean, you guys were too much for him. That's what he told me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm kind of, we have a guy named Ed Jaramillo, who's the vice president in charge of, uh, of uh, lots of things. Stuff. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm the operations guy. Okay. And, and if you don't like things, you could just step across the line into Canada. <laughs> I've been there lots. Oh, anyway, right on the border, aren't you, Mount Vernon? Close right? enough. We're about a half an hour and a uh, half hour from where. That far, okay. Anyway, thank you very much. This I, I'm glad I could help out where I can. Thank yeah, you. For thank the, you, Joseph. And, and thank that you was really that. cool information. I'm glad. I'm really glad that. Okay. Thank you very much. That. Thanks for presenting today. Anytime. Bye. Later. You know, I, wanted, I want to know what Renee de all has because she's sitting in a movie studio. I want to, <laughs> that's a, you're in a studio. I'm seeing you got a, a, a radio studio. No, but I see there's a, a, a clapboard there. Okay. That, that was a running joke we have about that. Oh, here. okay. <laughs> Nothing serious. No, there is a TV studio across the hall, that's but that's actually not. actually known as Sticks. Sticks. Yes. Sticks. Wakanda. <laughs> Wakanda. Yeah, Wakanda. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> no, we're just little way. Where are in you? Maui. In Maui? She's in Maui. I know. You're just trying to make us all jealous? I mean, so awesome. yes, I am. Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> wow. It's sunny, beautiful, hot 90 degrees right now. Glad I'm inside. Ooh, 90. Do you, does a breeze, ocean breeze, make a difference when it's 90? Sometimes it does. Today <laughs> is not so much. Uh, I think we had a, one more. Uh, Sandra, did you have a question that you wanted to discuss? Is she still here? No. Nah. 
No, I think we're done. Oh, she had to take off, I guess. Okay. And I didn't hear anything from the detour. I've always been curious. The detour's mic is, is that yeah. critical? Yeah, his mic isn't working. All right. Did anyone build their own, to their own tower? Any of the LPFMs? Say what? Did any of the LPFMs on this call build their own tower, like construct a metal? I'm wondering how much those cost. Hopefully they'll be. We, we just had like a 15 foot um, uh, need much. antenna freestanding on a roof. The biggest problem is getting all the paperwork into the FCC. Because you're changing your contour and probably your height. And God knows. And it's going to make it unless, how far away is the tower now? Uh, it's about three miles right now. It's going to totally change uh, your listenership if you move it three miles. Because what is an LP is like maybe five miles, maybe, on a good day. I don't Depends which that. direction. We, we go pretty far into Indiana, about 20 miles up there. But so you're, you, it's north of you? The tower is the north. The tower is north. And Indiana is too. I was just curious. We're just going to look into, we're just exploring our options. Because uh, the internet connection seems to go down at the worst possible times. I don't know. Mm. It's rough. You know, uh, I was going to say explore other options to connect, other STL options. Because I might, you know, do you have line of sight? Uh, maybe. If we, we'd have to put an antenna on top of our building. You know, I mean, a tower for the antenna also, at least a small tower. They did at, in, in Florence, in uh, outside, where's, I can't ever remember the name of the town Smith College is in, but uh, when we built the station there, their STL is Wi-Fi, it's illegal, using a coffee can as a, as a uh, dish to connect to their, to their tower, and it's about a mile, though. But you could do a lot with that, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. That's always an issue. STL is always kind of a thing. Moving it where you are probably would be cool. It'll, it's not going to be cheap. Because you got to, well, I don't know. Ask, ask the guys in Philadelphia. Ask uh, Prometheus. Yeah, ask, Petrus, no. ask uh, yeah, Prometheus. Because they do it. Hmm. You know. And you could, they were probably used towers lying around, literally, go into, you know, broadcast news in the back. And they're, you know, in the classified section, I bet you could find stuff like that. And you only need what, I don't know how much height you're going to be allowed, but it's never more than 100 feet. So you know, can in, go higher and then you got to bring your wattage down. Yeah, sure. I mean, you're going to have to have the same contour, but but right. we in in Urbana. I remember in in uh, Urbana, building the putting the station up on the post office. They just had a tower they put up on top, literally. I don't know. We have pictures of it, or he's had pictures of it, and so they just had a. It was like pre-built. It wasn't having to build it. It was a thing, so you could just take that thing and put it up there. They exist, so you could probably you know. Are you, are you in the city, like yeah. in with buildings and everything? Where we are is a, there are buildings, but not like really close to where we are. But we are, we are downtown. Yeah, well, that'll affect it. So, but, it, it, you know, it doesn't matter because I bet at least half your listenership's on the internet. That's, well, I mean, maybe. Debatable. <laughs> yes. All right, thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, I'll look into it tomorrow. I'll report back. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Later. Uh, I see Davine was asking about um, Alexa and Echo. She, I, you were the one, did you bring that up on email, Davine? Was that you? It must have been you. You're muted. So, someone else brought it up, and okay. um, there's a way to do it. It's pretty easy. They have a blueprint. So, but we can go into it some other meeting. 
Yeah, if the if you oh that's right you 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 had some experience with it so you were gonna yeah, I, yeah I did it a year ago and just to see how they've improved I did another one last night so when you're ready to do it I'll uh, I've got they some use, screenshots but they use oh. TuneIn TuneIn as a source don't they not necessarily not they necessarily? Uh, 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 it depends if I key in if I tell Alexa to key uh, to play WPVM, it'll come from TuneIn. But we also have three other skills that are the voice of Asheville, Asheville Radio, and one mm. other one that I named last night that will come straight from from uh, Amazon's elect, uh, whatever. Where I guess it's Amazon's cloud. I don't know. Yeah. The we had a. Uh, I have to switch. Mm -hmm. I had to switch. All of our streams have to go to uh, secure streams, mm -hmm. and so yeah. we did that at PFW, and TuneIn lost it. Yeah, and it took three months to get TuneIn to find it. You know, they don't care. It's just it's massive, and so that I see that as a huge breakdown in the whole Alexa thing. That that they're dependent on TuneIn, which I don't think, you know sucks basically well as i said uh tune in only uh delivers from alexa uh one way so we've got three other skills that are coming in not not associated with tune in i don't know how it is but it's not associated when you say a skill you mean a name of the station no that's what they call on on amazon when you go to their okay. developer uh uh section those uh just the radio station and everything else is called a skill let me see if i can mm. pull it up do you think otis um uh, i don't know how complex the virtual remote consoles presentation is for next week do you think there would be time to do talk about um Alexa and Echo on, well, the, on next week. The problem I have with Alexa is I don't want it around, so I don't have it. So I don't really deal with it. Okay, so skills. Now this, what we're looking at is from, is this are, from Amazon? Are, yeah, those are on Amazon. Am I live? Oh, yeah, those are Amazon. One didn't pass muster where it says just me. So there's, there's uh, tricks in, in how you word whatever the skill you're developing from those blueprints that they've got one of them they rejected but the rest of them are live well can you are you competing with TuneIn? in other words could you have one of these skills be wpvm and then give them the information that it needs to connect well here's the thing uh so the skills they take the information that you feed in, that you configure, they're not quite smart enough yet to accept a skill named WPVM because of the lettering. So this, right now, I tested it again yesterday. You can see the one I did yesterday was Voices of Asheville WPVM uh, for, on June 30th. But um, I think that's just the uh, the WPVM part is just the title that I gave it. But uh, Alexa, their skill, whoever is capturing it, uh, they're not quite advanced enough yet to be picking up the uh, call letters. So, but now, and how do you say with this? How do you make this go to the to the link to the stream? Is well, that under detail? No. So when you when you start configuring for a skill, they ask for your stream. So ah, okay. um, the skills that I use, so here's their skill, uh, their blueprint page. Mm -hmm. And so I go all the way to the bottom and I did, so yesterday I did flash briefing. The other that I did last year, those are under their spiritual talks and somehow I was able to finagle and, and get them to accept that skill. But uh, yesterday they accepted the flash briefing because it's for audio files. And so you add your HTTPS uh, stream URL and uh, you insert it in when you're configuring
the skill. And um, so the thing is, those those I remote. Think you got to do a thing. I think you have to do a thing where you go through it step by step because you know I'm I'm like I a little I'm PowerPoint. A little PowerPoint. Stuff. I'll be glad to do a PowerPoint. No, you could talk it and show it that way. Yeah, I think I could. Or yeah. If you wanted to build a PowerPoint, that. you could do that. Yeah. Okay, but that, but but, there, but I have eight million questions now, having seen that, and I don't want to start it. But boy, do you think we would have? Cut, do you way, think we would there's have a way to do this? Because the the PFW thing really soured me on the mm -hmm. whole thing. It's like, man, you have no control over it at all. It, 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 down for three months mm -hmm. is what it amounted to. And all I did was, you know, and we even submitted it to tune in and all that other stuff mm -hmm. it was a joke. So if there's a way to get around that, man, I would love to know what it is. It would yeah, be and skills, worth its weight in gold. And those external speakers are, you know, like radio was a hundred years ago. I think they're partially the wave of the future. So you want your station to be on there. And you want to be able to tell people they can listen on, on their, on their echo or. Yeah. With, with so the NPR know, station here in Austin does it constantly. Yeah. Thing. And all the NPR people are saying, you know, they're all competing with each other. That's what I love. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of the ways of the future. So we need to be on it. Yeah. Right. Well, if you did a PowerPoint on that, uh, we could, I don't know if you, think there would be enough time to do both presentations next week. I don't know how big of a topic or if you want to have your own slot. No, we can play it by ear. It doesn't matter. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll go to the Alexa skill page and just walk through uh, the steps. Okay. Okay. You've got to show us how to get to the Alexa skill page. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I the will. Whole, yes. The whole process. <laughs> Start with a blank yard. screen. Because yeah. some of us, well, me, are not smart we need to be led. <laughs> well i don't know if it's a matter of smart or you just have a knack for computers because i'm not sure you need to be smart to have the knack but i think i just inherited it so yes. <laughs> i don't get much credit right. <laughs> but yeah so let's just play it by ear and if uh it, because it's not going to take a lot of preparation since i did another test run yesterday just to refresh myself so it might take about 10 or 15 minutes to do it. That would be great. Okay, sounds good. All right, what else? I wanna go, I'm done. Joe Orozco yeah. hasn't said a word. <laughs> he did talk at the beginning, you missed like. it. <laughs> Why do I think KIDE was on Hopi? Where is it? What? I'm just wondering where KIDE is. Joseph Station? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where is it? We're in Hoopa. Yeah. We're in Northern California, Eastern Humboldt oh, okay. County. Okay. And which reservation is it? Hoopa. Hoopa oh, Valley. Okay. Duh. Right, okay. Forgive me. Duh. There you go. All right. What else? Stephanie? Well, seems like we're at a good stopping point. Um, I do have a tiny question for you, Otis, when we're done. Um, okay. But unless, uh, unless anyone else has anything to add. Um, oh, I'll just say this because Allison put this in the chat for people who listen to this later, that she said that uh, StreamYard is a good alternative to Zoom. And um, looks like there's YouTube. I'll, tutorials on that and it looks like Davine seconded that. Um, but if the, yeah, I think, I think we're about done. And then next week we'll have John and Otis talk about the virtual remote consoles featuring clean feed. So thank you again for everyone's contribution. Um, have a wonderful holiday weekend. It's kind of a weird holiday this year, but uh, hope it hope it's nice for everybody. Um, Thank you. Yeah. All. Good Thank to see you everyone. Guys. Thank you so much. Looking forward to next week. Yeah, me too.